I think you could get all the DNA you need from one plane trip. Oh, excuse me. Long. Oh, I'm so oh, sorry. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> In 1996, Scholastic began publishing Animorphs. Over the next six years, Catherine Applegate and her husband, Michael Grant, under the pseudonym K.A. Applegate, produced 54 main series books, several spin-offs, and inspired a TV series, graphic novels, and a cult following. We can't tell you where we live. We can't even tell you our last names. But we can tell you our thoughts and feelings on this series, book by book. I'm Miranda. I'm Eddie. And I'm Chris. And we are... The The (laughs) Anadors! may be kids books but we discuss dark themes and mature content there may also be some explicit language listener discretion is advised so after this huge lore dump lauren's like well you're just gonna have to erase my memory of all this anyway and Elfangor's like, we don't have a ship anymore. It's kind of I couldn't creepy. erase your memories it. if I wanted yeah. to. It's the, fa- the fact that this is the first thing he mentions is very disturbing to me. But then he realizes, yeah, yeah he, he says, Lauren responds to that. She says, but if you could, you would. And he goes to us, he says, I hadn't thought about it. But suddenly I realized the truth. It shocked me. And then he says to Lauren, no, I wouldn't. Because I don't think that after all that's happened, I could stand to be the only person alive who knew the truth, and I don't think I could stand having you forget me, Lauren. And she says, I care about you too, Mm -hmm. Elfangor. I care a lot. He's like, and then did and I say I was like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, what did I say? <laughs> no, he says, you know, we'd be able to move a lot faster if you climbed on my back as you did before. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. That's essentially what happens this chapter. That's like, yeah. She goes, I guess we could, or I guess we would. And she climbs on and he goes running off and he's like, all right, we got to find the center of the time matrix, or we got to find the time matrix at the center of the hyperspiral. But if I've had this idea, we'll figure Mr. 32 have solved the puzzle already, too. And it's the like, end of an episode of Legends of the Hidden Temple right now. <laughs> like, it's right. To be continued. <laughs> right. Yeah. And uh, they have to go through the Yerk area. It's a little warm. It's a little stifling. Well, it's like, do we have a little to? humid. Oh. He closed up his hooves. So he didn't have to taste anything. And it does anything. say he, well, he retracts his... Um, his uh, hoof tongue. It does not say that. <laughs> but a, a, a bright tongue does. <laughs> no, no, no. It says it says that. It does say that in my. It says that. It says I used my hoof hoof tongue to clog a vent of dangerous gas to save Loren. Yeah, that says but it right here. We do see those weird tongues shooting up from the ground again. Oh and yeah, and it like oh yeah, and the tongues wrap around each other for like a brief minute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. They cross the landscape, it's depressing, and then they get back to Andalite, gl- uh, Andalite Grass, which he's happy about. And he gets to point out his uh, his childhood friend, Scoop. She's like, you want to go visit? And, he's, and like, he's like, you know what, I don't want to, if I manage to actually bring any Andalites here, I don't want to see what they fucking look like. Yeah. There's yeah, a lot more how, eyes. Like, yeah. Our bronze there, but he just looks are. really, really hot. Like... <laughs> 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 like posing the whole time like like yeah tossing like, a discus yeah. for some reason he's like <laughs> he's like the he's like the hot squidward thing yeah. you know what i'm talking yeah, about yeah. and then uh elfangor trips and lauren realizes that her fingernails are growing really fast and her hair is growing really fast <laughs> just as hot arbron only- shows up lauren suddenly has this tangle of hair and freakishly long <laughs> Fingernails. And Alfangor realizes they're aging faster as they reach the center of the universe because time is accelerating at the center of the hyperspiral. We're not really given a reason for this. It's, These it's descriptions just are so gross. Yeah, like as they get closer to the time matrix, like for some reason time's speeding up. But like this description, I looked at Loren and had to stop myself from crying out. Her fingernails were two inches long. Her toenails were sticking through the fabric of her artificial hooves. Mm. And her golden hair. And her, and her golden, golden hair, hair was long and reached the ground. That one's less but disturbing. It's what, true. You're right. It's really disturbing what happens to Elfangor, too. He has scruffy hooves. <laughs> yeah, and he <laughs> trips. And he has to, he does, he has to he trim, trim them, yeah. It's just so adorable. Scruffy hooves quick. is like, yeah. I wish I had scruffy hooves. hooves. Uh, 
But then they can see a swirling tornado at the very center of the universe, made up of the substance of the three worlds. The drain of the universe. All we have to do is throw enough bowling balls in there and time will be fixed. (laughs) There's a there's a twister moment where a house goes flying by. I guess it's also a Wizard, I thought of, Oz Wizard of Oz moment. Probably, yeah. It's more likely a Wizard of Oz moment, yeah. And then they're like, we got to go in. We got to go in. And they hold hands with her gnarly, ragged <laughs> no, fingernails. No, he nails. Didn't he do that? No, he does. not yet. They're still oh, growing. I he did oh, he should have done it before he held her hand. He didn't do it before. He didn't do it before. He it seems a little odd that they don't mention how difficult he that He trims was. his hooves. Yeah, he trims his hooves, but he does nothing to help her. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and then and then she, she says, uh, you know, oh, they're about to dive in. And she says, take my hand, oh, fang or... And then he did. Yeah. And, and they walk together into a they swir- pushed into a vortex made of a, a swirl of raw yeah. space time. Yeah. Pretty cool. And then chapter 43 starts with them uh, happy at the end of yeah. the war. No, uh, we have to hear about the star been taken care of. again. The tribunals are just around the corner. Um, chapter 43. Yeah, into we, the vortex we get we a little nostalgic. We think back to where this all had started. But they keep pushing forward. Trees and buildings are being blown around and then they're being blown through them mm-hmm. like they don't even exist yeah, yeah that part's yeah it's, it's hard to it's hard really to strange vision was yeah. wild and distorted and filled with insane colors and bits and pieces of floating oddly shaped matter trees and buildings uh, and creatures that seem solid simply blew through us as if they were ghosts or as if we were ghosts and then they dun, managed dun, to dun. get it's to the, the center. six fucking cents yeah, yeah. They're all dead. They were all already dead. And Visser 32 sees dead people. Oh Oh my God. He didn't move the chair when he didn't sit down. Oh my God. (laughs) Anyway. It's it's an old reference. I understand. (laughs) They find the eye of the storm. They had penetrated a storm that had twisted time and space. And uh, there's the time matrix, simple off-white sphere that had the power to create this eerie universe. Looks like a Macintosh computer. (laughs) Imperfect (laughs) thoughts. Actually, then they're like that tracks with where the book goes. That maybe that is where Macs come from. Yeah, Windows. But yeah, but also they mentioned Steve too. Sorry, I'm getting ahead. Steve Jobs. For some reason, I fucking thought that was Steve they Ballmer. Do. Oh my god, I'm These so embarrassed. These books are meant for people the like others... me who don't know that who that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bill Gates worked with the rich man. Oh, you know what? Steve you might Ballmer, be right. Then so I, I just... don't know if Steve Jobs was. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's definitely oh, really? Steve Jobs. You're totally okay. right. I'm totally yeah. wrong. Yeah. No, you're you're correct. I'm. Anyway, we'll no, get we're gonna to cut me being this and we'll paste bit. that later, and then we won't have to talk about. Correct. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> From the other side of the swirl, they see an andalite head emerge, and it's the he visitor, and he goes, what? The, the andalite child and his pet, still alive. Do you think he's stuck And in- he's brought his mortar. hoof through now, first. he's had a lot of time to think of nicknames, and he's still working with the yeah. pet line. Mm. You know, he's, I just think he, he should really... He's not leveled up like anyway. when we meet him later. This isn't, he's still mm-hmm. learning to be himself, you know? Oh, I was, I was just imagining him sticking a... Uh, a dainty paw through. What was a it, dainty, jaunty? Oh, a breaking, jaunty? A dainty paw? Yes, breaking the scene. A jaunty wave. Yes, That's yes. what he did earlier. A jaunty wave. Oh, a jaunty wave. Hi. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> um, I love him. Lauren's not doing so hot. No. Yeah, her. Uh, what makes you say that? Her hands had become her hair. hideous claws. <laughs> Yeah, uh, her her hair is just piles on the ground. I mean, it's still connected mm-hmm. to her head, but there's so much of it that is piling up on the ground. Her toenails are nearly a foot through her shoes. Yeah, uh, she could use some. She could use some help. And now, yeah. now he cuts away her fingers and tone. Uh, no, I'm sorry, her fingernails. Her fingers. And toenails. <laughs> 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 I can take care of this. It does actually say, with four quick tail swipes, I cut most of the finger and toenail (laughs) away. (laughs) Oh, Uh, yeah. So he may have gotten a little confused. He may have accidentally. (laughs) Well, she'll get it back when they imagine a new universe. Can you put that on silent? Yeah, also, the typing is coming through for me. I don't know if any of you hear it. There's... It's a, it's okay if, like, I don't... I know I don't know what the... Gotta get a quieter keyboard. I, he I won't get, get a, a quieter keyboard. keyboard. No, 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 um, I meant for myself. Oh. <laughs> Tell him that that wasn't for him. That's Apparently it was actually I'd, directed at Chris, so... Yeah. You, I just, you like loud keyboards. I've never seen you use a keyboard that's not loud and go, I like this. I like the clicky. 
<laughs> yeah. Tell I had a friend who um I will remain nameless who annoyingly installed a program that made uh typing play random musical notes while he <laughs> typed. And I was like, that's literally the worst thing you could possibly do. Yeah, like you're random. telling me you go to a coffee shop and your computer is like yeah, and Chris, like, everyone would think that person was special, fun. That's what they would think. They would think that's a fun person. There's a special ring of hell. I was talking about quick divergence. Hell. Can I tell a quick story? Sure. All the coffee shops. I don't know if you experienced this. I feel like it was better when we were in New York, but all the coffee shops that I go to in Philly have become needle drop coffee shops. Like you can't. You can't. You could hear a like mouse. Like they don't even play music. Squeaking. They play music, but that's it. It's so quiet in there. There's nobody talking. There's no cacophony. It is just totally silent. And what I'm realizing is, like, I I tried to go there to work the other day, and I was sitting there typing away on my computer. I was trying to work, and there was exactly one boring conversation happening, and it was quiet though. So they'd like say like a couple words, and then like a couple more words, and then total silence. I was like, wow, this is excruciating and then i realized like the poor baristas have to be there all day yeah and everything they say is just public knowledge and if they have a conversation they're like it's like they're on the worst version of saturday night live it's like saturday morning crap well no don't you remember saturday morning terrible don't you remember from pop copy it's like make sure you're on the phone having like an uncomfortable co- or having an uncomfortable conversation with a coworker whenever a customer comes up it's like <laughs> it's like my butt itches <laughs> can i help you like <laughs> yeah if, but it's like it's like people being like like it's like baristas not really like seeming to know each other and being like so how was your weekend it's like I don't really want to get into it if it's this quiet. <laughs> yeah. And then the other one being like, sounds fun. And then, <laughs> anyway, all right, back mm-hmm. to the book already in progress. We're so close. We're we going to finish this book. It's almost done. The only thing I have to say about this chapter is how dirty it is. Because when Elf- when, when <laughs> the language choices, like for some reason, Lauren is moaning to yeah. Elfangor. Yeah. Yeah. And then this sound effect noise. It's hilarious. The it's flap, really flap, funny. Flap. Yeah. It's really funny. It's like it is not a. It is well. one letter off. Well, Chris, what's and happening Miranda- there is that Alfie is cutting off Lauren's fingers and her toenails. <laughs> <laughs> That's I know the it's sound that would be perfectly innocent yeah. and Christian. Yeah. I know, it's a good I know Christian that, sound, but <laughs> sound effect. <laughs> a good Christian sound for a good Christian yeah. audience, but, but <laughs> it'll play well in the sticks. But all I'm saying is, is this is like it. It, it is pretty yeah. funny. It's it's it's. I'm not. I, it's just pretty yeah. funny. It's flap. Yeah. Which is so close to other sounds on a monopiaic, and it's pretty so, funny. So the rest of the chapter is basically just a fight because that we get. Visser thirty two. It's round two of the Mortron yes, fight. It is really like we have. We must face off again. Visser thirty two suggests that we that they will have to work together to create a new universe and. Elfie explains that the same thing would happen in another compromised universe. Lauren suspects that Visser 32 um, just... Can we just call him Visser 3? We know he becomes Visser 3. So yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I mean, I think that's actually like, in, you know, that's like the Wikipedia policy yeah. on, on like renaming of trans people. It's like you don't yeah. dead name them. Like, and all the, and like all the previous references yeah, get updated. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and it's like you, if it's important, you go, who was then going by this 32? By, right. If it's relevant, yeah. but you know, I think, I think we'd be, uh, we'd be in the right. Yeah. It's just that Vistor we keep 3. seeing Mr. 32 here over and over again. Um, <laughs> um, it has, it has. It does have something to it. Visser 32 is pretty good. I All like his it. titles have been good. Sub Visser 7, Visser 32. Sub Visser 7? Visser that was 3. sexy. Yeah. It was a good Sub one. Sub Visser 7 was hot. Yeah, he's going to guarantee for it. Was remember it, the was days it was alliterative. It was. Yes. Yeah. 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 When he was when he was wearing sh- shirts that were a li- one size too tight so that they could rip when he showed off his <laughs> and those jean shorts we saw in that one image of him. Oh my <laughs> that god! That was definitely sub Oh my seven. god! Yeah. Um, yes, subreddit. So Lauren, set. no, it's not a joke. Is, Cut um, <laughs> um, shut up! <laughs> okay. Shut up! Uh, Lauren is pointing out. She's like, I think he's afraid to fight you. That's why he's suggesting you work together, and. Visser 32, this is, Visser 3, sorry, is not, 
he doesn't he doesn't hide his cards at all. He just goes, I will be sure to kill you slowly, Lauren, when she suggests this. He <laughs> yeah. doesn't try to cover up at all. Like, no, that's not true. I'm actually really confident that I could win this fight. Like, Yeah, he's like, I w- why would I be afraid of an Andalite child? My Mortrons and I will annihilate him. Yeah. Why did, and, why did uh, you have to bring Mortrons? Yeah. That's what... That's what. Well, yeah, with the, the Mortrons, and I want to know what the what the bearings. aging. I want to know what the time vortex is doing to the Mortrons, and we get nothing. Well, the thing about Mortrons is you have to oil their joints every day. <laughs> you have to have a little. You have to have one of those little oil spritzers, and you know, like the Tin Man. You yeah. know, let's keep it Wizard of Oz. Why mm-hmm. not? And then you have to go, and you have to oil up their little flesh bearings. Because they generate a lot of heat in there. Oh, I'm sure. A lot friction. of chafing in the flesh bearings. A lot of, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. When they um, when the Mortrons attack, it says they launch their board, bird portions. And I thought yes, it said... because remember, they can yeah. launch these. I rated this bird potions at first, which I was much more oh, excited my. about. But um, Potion. Yes. In fact, this is for birds. the name of the fantasy series I will commission you to write yeah, with. Yeah. Is, is, is the bird potion yeah. series. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's, <laughs> the Brood Potion Trilogy. It's not the best fight of the book. Also, I would say cut the Mortrons. That's what I would say. I don't think the the Mortrons. Here's do the thing: they if suck. we they if suck. we cut the I Mortrons, though, if we cut the Mortrons, because because Lauren gets into this fight, she's got her bat and she's she's hitting things. But she um, softball and at learned, one point, which is just like her does. fighting game <laughs> moment. They, they've learned. It's to, like her yeah. catchphrase. Falcon yeah, punch like, softball. <laughs> They've learned to knock them out now so that they don't do like duplicate themselves into more Mortrons. Yeah. Bludgeoning yeah. damage. Important for but us D and D nerds. While while there's a tail fight going on, Lauren is choking. Yeah. One of the bird portions of the Mortron and her fingernails are growing so fast into that they are it. growing into the Mortron. Yeah. She is yeah. choking and stabbing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, it's twisted. it's awful. It's the worst thing I've ever. And yet, read. it would be an amazing finishing move for Lauren to execute this, but she doesn't get to kill it that way. It actually survives that, right? She throws it aside, right? Is that yeah? That's when she yells softball. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. This is after that. Oh, this so you think after, she kills it? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I think no, she, for sure, I she think, kills it. Yeah, but this is while the tail fight's happening, and there's one more Mortron <gasps> circling back, right. coming for Elfangor, and Elfangor is like a Mortron's about to bite me, and it, an Andalite tail blade is flying at me. I can only block one, but bird or blade, whichever struck would finish me. But Lauren spins the dead Mortron in her hand around, throws it with all her might, and then yes, I apologize, Eddie. She does yell. Soft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is dead. It is dead when she throws it. But it, it is yeah. dead. Yeah, yeah. She's so good at killing these Mortrons. Alfangor revises, which I think he's already done a while ago. But he says he revises his opinion of humans. He says, "I decided that I could definitely get to like humans." He loves how good at killing they are, as someone who's so good at killing himself. Um, they have a hobby in common. Yeah. He really loved, I think his favorite bit was when the dead Mortron slipped off the ends of her <laughs> yeah. fingernails as she he threw it. As a she real Freddy Krueger moment. Yeah. It's literally like, all I can imagine is the like tensions and torsions that would put on my fingernail. Like I can't stand having, like the least pleasant thing is you, playing a guitar with long fingernails. It's so, you, uh, you, it's uh, so you bad. You don't, you don't got to tell me, you don't got, I fingernails Man, the I, worst. I can't. Anytime. It's like, like you know that, that really good at the drive-in song? Yep. It hurts yeah. me the one every that time. about fingernails? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do know. Yep. Nice throw, I said. <laughs> it's called, <laughs> it's called it's a pitch. It's called a pitch. The pitch. <laughs> Which is what James says to me every time I say, look at that nice soccer feel. Oh. <laughs> it's called a pitch. Is that really what it's called in Look soccer? Look at all these chickens. <laughs> it's called a pitch. Yeah, it's called. So what basically happens here is um, Visser, 30, Visser 3 retreats, right? Is that right? Sure. No. So 
Uh, yeah, that's right. What does that's happen? Right. Yeah. He does retreat. He you gives up. He's won, like, Andalite. he's you think, like, you can kill me now. Guess again. You haven't thought it through. But then again, I have the advantage of adding Alarin's Andalite knowledge to my own. What do you think will happen to whoever is left behind in this universe once it is broken apart? I had the struggle to think an artificial universe composed of the thoughts and memories of three different individuals. So he's taught, this is, he, Visser 3 will be returned. If Lauren and Alfangor create a new universe without Visser 3, he'll be returned to the Jahar, which is collapsed in the other... If we... So, no, it's if we destroy this universe. When we collapse this universe, everybody will go back to where they should right. be. Which is where they were all yes. dying. But what happens... But, and that is what happens to him, because he retreats. He leaves, right? He's part of the universe that gets destroyed. We don't know exactly I'm what happens I'm very confused what happens Do I don't him. know... I don't know... Why he retreats exactly, I don't know, like, I really don't understand why he retreats. Like, why... He has nothing to lose. he assume? Right? To... He has everything to no, lose. No, but I mean, him. he should continue fighting for that reason, because otherwise he's just going to get returned. Yeah. Right! Yeah, yes, yeah exactly. because, yes, because Alfanger's like, so yeah, you go yeah, back yeah. to he the Jahar being sucked into a black hole. <laughs> <laughs> I can live I, you with know that. Me. I don't know that's, how idioms work. That's I, fine. Like, <laughs> Yeah, exactly, yeah. So he does retreat, but in this last moment, he says, The day will come, Alfangor, when I will destroy you. I will make it personal. I will make it very personal. I feel like I'm doing the Baldi's finger wag. <laughs> how I always imagine your father. I, I didn't know that was the Baldi's finger wag. I, I always I imagine you your father wag our doing fingers. this. <laughs> You uh, imagined it. He makes it's points like exactly. this. He does. He, he does. He does. He does, does gesture. <laughs> he does gesture. <laughs> but it, the finger wag is not not one in like of a them. scolding kind of way, but to emphatically no, make a when point. When he doesn't have, when he's had a beer or two, yes. and he yes. doesn't have this a response, exactly right. he'll clap and then go like. <laughs> 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 because my memory is that. Chris's birthday in West Philly, and he had had a beer or two. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But so, yes, they... You're they, right, he gestures. Yeah. They part on on friendly terms, <laughs> and... Star, <laughs> Star-crossed <laughs> lovers, I think. Yeah. Star-crossed lovers. He's like, hey, I'll see you yeah. later, bud. Lauren is like, I'm definitely getting older. My... I'm getting older. I swear I'm suddenly 18. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She won't describe exactly it's what's hard. happening. What's changed? It's hard. How this many is so Okay, weird. I don't I don't want to be this person. But how many periods did she have? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, during no, this I mean, time vortex. That's that's true. She was riding true. on his back. Yeah. Right. And we get no mention. <laughs> I'm just. That's all we have yeah. to say. That's all we have yeah. to say. But I'm. Yeah. Yeah. If 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 we're to believe that biological processes are to like. If her like, nails are growing, and mm-hmm. she, and her boobs are growing, which is, is what I assume she is implying here, when she's like, "I'm getting older," we'll leave it at that. Like. Well, that's why the ellipses is there. <laughs> <laughs> but we have to have I'm suddenly 18, or we can't have the rest of the yeah, book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is a good point. That the time moved at exactly the pace that it needed to in order for that right. to be. Right. This is a plot device. It's just it's an a ugly wild. One. It just plot has. Device. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. It's like I love yeah. when my when my teenage girlfriend accidentally walks into a time vortex and comes out legal. Yeah. <laughs> like, that, that that is the he, uncomfortable he was also he was also sort of a child and he does also age with yeah. her. So right. it's, it's all it's all it's all yeah, above yeah, board. Um, I also want to point out just because. It's just we shouldn't be reading this at all. No, it's just... a fan fiction moment, if there ever was one. So, <laughs> Lauren also says, Lauren, who has not read the Animorphs books, she hasn't. She says, nope. that's the end of him. Let's just, hold on. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> El- El- yeah, Fangor, famously hasn't read yeah, the Animorphs El- Fangor books. says, no. Yeah, Elfangor must have. I don't think so. I won't say I had a vision. I, I don't believe much in supernatural things. But I felt deep down that the Visser and I would find our timelines entwined again someday. You know, he's just staring off at him as he exits. Visser, Mm -hmm. yeah. So they have to go. He's the one that got away. No, Arbron. He is the second one that got away. He's the second one that got away, and now he has to settle for his Plan C, (laughs) Lorette, who's got a mess of hair. I'll make this work. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> well, we don't have to. That's yeah, yeah. you know, it's like yeah. yeah. So they're like, we've, we all, gotta, uh, we've all woken up with five foot long <laughs> fingernails before. Yeah. So they're like, we got to go somewhere real. And she's like, well, should we go? Should we go to the Andalites? And he's like, no. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> A lot we go has to- happened. <laughs> I think maybe no. I think no, actually, no. What? Do, where do you want to go? <laughs> And he also says that he feels like he can't go back because he knows that they used a quantum virus. Yeah, he actually says, I know too many secrets. And he can't give them the time matrix. He's like, mm-hmm. what would they do with it? Yeah. And she she gets a good line here. Lauren says, I guess sometimes even good people do bad things. I mean, that's what war is all about, isn't it? And I'm not convinced Damn, by this. I think Alloran uh, was written as a bad person who continued to do bad Doing things. Doing bad things. <laughs> yeah, like he was, yeah, I don't know why, like maybe she's trying to soften the blow, but it's like. It's he was yeah. a douche and he was a douche the entire yeah. time. So Elfangor thinks that they have to win the war living up to their own standards or there's no pro, like no purpose in it, no moral value. So fuck the people that are going to die for the next 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And so they decide to go to Earth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Th- and they have some problems to work out that they just made in this very same chapter, which is like, so they're going to go to Earth a week. When is when are they going? They're going or he was like, when were you picked up? And it was like roughly a week ago. <laughs> and so they're going to go back to Earth a week yep. ago. They consider undoing all of it, saving everyone. Mm-hmm. But then but they then realize they... that means they wouldn't have met and they don't right. want that. Which is so selfish because it's like just you, you, plenty of fish, guys. Come on. Yeah. And also they don't know what would have happened to the time matrix. He's like, uh, there's a there's an actual good reason. We can't just let the script not escape with the time matrix. So better to better to just uh, go go to like right after you were abducted so that you can't run into yourself. Which she then points out there's one more problem, though. I'm old now. <laughs> like, I'm not the age that I was when I left. And then he simply says, yeah, but imagine that's not a problem. <laughs> you need 18. He's in no way a problem. We just got to work around it. <laughs> imagine that everybody knows you're 18 and expects like, you to be 18. Right. This is like a literal, like, when she sent this to her editor, she just circled it and said, don't fuck with me. <laughs> like, don't ask for a revision on this. Like, we're done. The book is done. So, and so she's going to drive the time matrix and they drive Mm -hmm. a million light years and one week away okay so three years have passed so now lauren is which is to imply let's be clear here three years later means that they went back a week in time no they went forward a week in time oh did they so that that she wouldn't run into herself you're right no they did go back a week in time you're right you're right you're right you're right you're right you're right I just think it's funny because it's like, you know, now we're now we're time traveling. Yeah. yeah. You know, we, they're not the only ones who can time travel. We can time travel too. I can flip through the pages so fast, you won't even be able to tell what year it is. <laughs> so, so it's 3 years later, so Lauren should be 21. So now fully an adult except that she can't rent a car. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm about to highlight something I can't believe we all didn't can highlight. Can I uh, I'm just going to read this first part while you're highlighting it, okay? Um Mhm. No, it's in there. I ran away from the great war of Yurk against Andalite. I ran away and hid on the planet called Earth. I buried the time matrix in a patch of woods. I performed a frawless maneuver. Frawless maneuver! The mixing of different DNA to form a single morph. Now... Why didn't Axe say this? I don't know. Now the f- Axe, because well, he when Axe did he it, was he was serious still kindnessing. Yeah, he was still serious yeah. kindnessing. He was trying to hide information. From he was a liar, but I will just say like is, Rachel. It sounds like yeah. yeah, little piece of shit, lying little piece of shit, Rachel Axe. The <laughs> point is. <laughs> This would be very efficiently performed on a plane. Like, I think you could get all the DNA you need from one plane trip, oh, however long. Me. Oh, I'm so oh, sorry. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. We're on an escalator. Or just riding really any form of yeah. public transit. Yeah. The escalator, they say they got those UV lights on the handle. They're no, real out of passing Have you seen this? Into those, no, I'm upset that those haven't been there always. I don't understand why it took COVID to add UV lights on the handle. That should have always seen been them. a thing. Oh, they every time you go to a convention center now, like all the all the 
escalators have these special signs on them that are like, it's safe to touch the yeah. railing. Because, like, you touch it, and then when it goes back through, it goes through, like, a UVD... D- but D- do you know that fire. thing? Do you know that the, so there were people who were so OCD they would like microwave their sponge to sterilize them? Ugh, but the thing is, smart but people. here's no, no, it it had the opposite effect where like it killed all of the easy to kill shit and left so only the, the, the super bugs. The, the super bugs, exactly, like the dankest mold that was unkillable by microwave. <laughs> Like and so like sometimes you can take sanitation a little okay. too far, and that's where we'll end. I want to talk about anyway. another sentence that comes right after the frawless maneuver. Do you want to talk about the animorphs? <laughs> it seems like you really want to talk about um, the animorphs. I feel like this this might be doing as much work as um, that ellipses the frawless in, maneuver that uh, Lauren used. Um, so oh, I performed yeah. the frawless maneuver in a mixing of different DNA to form a single morph. I found ways to come in contact with humans and absorb bits of several <laughs> DNA patterns. Like he had a brief, a, like he, brief a grind of phase. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I think so. Like a, like yeah. yeah, I think he, he like was in some parks the in the middle of the night. Hard. I no, go for no, long no. walks. He just joined his. He just joined his square dancing no, that's club. From, Oh, <laughs> that's hands. actually way more realistic. Yeah. And the apps didn't exist yet, but Square Def- Dancing yeah, definitely yeah. did. Um, I'm just imagining, what's his name? Joe from Angels in America. When he's being confronted by Harper and he's like, sometimes I go for walks and long walks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that is El Hydor. He's Joe Pitt. Yeah. <laughs> He is oh my more God. than Joe Pitt. God. We saw Lee we saw Lee Pace play that role. He was fantastic. It was amazing. <laughs> and then he says, and when I had enough, I morphed the human for the first time. Um, and for the last time, you see, I was done with the fight. I had done it all, all I could, and I had made a mess of things. My people would be better off without me, and there was no way to hide over the long term. I had to become a human and stay a human. So he's a human not Yes, yeah. he is. And this is an important thing to know because this proves that the Elemis can technically reverse anothletting, which we We will see that, yes, yeah. Yeah, but like, and we know that they could do it temporarily. We have not seen them do it long term for someone yet, but they're about to do it in a couple chapters. So let's read on. Yeah, you won't be too surprised to find out that... This, you know, things don't stay happy, happy forever. Ending. Ain't so yeah. happy. He uh he lives as a human. He majors in physics. Uh God, what if somebody clips me saying ain't so happy and is like, this is just who Chris is? <laughs> like, what if like what if someone's like Chris is such a vapid piece of shit <laughs> and they say stuff like ain't so happy? <laughs> Why so <laughs> That's what you don't want to be clip saying. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, he says it's hard to pretend not to know everything already that he had learned from a, his childhood, but it's, it's like he manages. Break. Yeah. And he misses his stock eyes and his tail. Oh, it's like Desmond from Lost. And, Sorry. Anyway. And, uh... He likes, he says, the human sense of taste is wonderful, almost overpowering. Yeah. Oh, wow, weird. Yeah. Didn't have that as no, a candlelight. Haven't been talking sense. about that for 150 pages. <laughs> for more than that, dude, this book's long. <laughs> and then there was Lauren. She had recreated her own life to deal with the fact that she had aged several years. She went back to a mother who never knew she had been gone, back to friends and family who had expected her to be the age she now was. The power of the time matrix is awesome! I had seen what it could do. <laughs> that's how you read that line, right? Yeah, that yeah, is that's 100%. Three. You nailed it. You nailed it. Yeah, so uh, he finishes college quickly. Um, he begins grad school. <laughs> he's bored there. He starts <laughs> writing software. Yeah, he's d- doing computer yeah. science there. Yeah, he starts writing software 
it, go ahead and tell it because I got this so wrong. I'm embarrassed. Like it was this the 1980s is embarrassing. On Earth, that humans were just beginning to understand computers. He meets a lot of humans who are working in the computer field. His human friend Bill used to come over to his room and they'd exchange ideas. It was hard for him to ex- simplify his knowledge enough for Bill to follow. Everything had to be explained in simple human terms, using words like "window" to explain a childishly simple concept. I don't know who he's talking about. Mm. This is Bill. Couldn't couldn't uh, <laughs> a bill with a window? Yeah. Oh, who knows? Uh-huh. I don't have enough XP <laughs> to understand this. <laughs> and my human friend Steve thought it was a huge breakthrough to use symbolic icons and a simple pointer rather than a lot of complex language. Who's that, Chris? It's so gooey. It's Steve Jobs, apparently, because well, you're who in- right that Steve. Who- who invented GUI? I think Xerox. I think <laughs> Xerox did all of it. I, there was like there were people working at Xerox who invented the mouse and invented GUI, GUI? and then like these two people graphical, graphical user, user interface. interface. It's uh, every piece of software you interact GUIs with. GUIs are has used a GUI. instead of text-based UIs. Yeah. But me for work, I use a lot of text-based UIs. Oh, I love this. I think this is incredible. I am a computer. Um, uh, so we get Bill Gates, we get Steve Jobs, and then we get Chapman Chapman. I saw Chapman at the Chapman college. Chapman Chapman. <laughs> what was his first name? I don't remember it's anymore. Like Herminus Laurie? or something. Herschel. Herschel? Herschel? Yeah. Herminus. Her- no, it's not Herschel. It's not it Herschel. It's like... Somebody, it's like- somebody Syrupedia it. It's something bizarre. But be careful. Yeah, you might figure out how he got back from the jar. <laughs> Hedrick. Hedrick. And the angry inch. Uh, um, <laughs> and the angry Chapman. <laughs> and the angry um, chap. It made no sense. We had left Chapman back on the Jahar, tumbling toward a black hole. He should have been swallowed by the black hole, crushed and annihilated. Will we get an answer in this book to how he got off the Jahar? No. <laughs> No, no, I guess we do. We do. No. The Elemist. He says he yeah. had a purpose oh, to serve. Yeah. Um, yeah, because he 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 recounts all the lovely things he gets to do. You know, he Lauren tests Chapman, make sure he's not still remembering. Is that one of the lovely things, or were you about to launch into a list of lovely things? And then, and then like, I remembered. Oh, I yeah, Lauren tests Chapman. Is like yeah, heard so from they, your they old like, friend Visser thirty two lately, and he's like, "You are clearly an insane woman, and I would like mm-hmm. you to leave me alone." Can we just talk about like you'd never, ever, ever want to test Chapman that way? Because if the answer is no, then he thinks you're crazy, and I guess that's the best case scenario. The worst case scenario is that he. Has yeah. talked to Visser three lately, and like, <laughs> like, what do you do then? Yeah. It's like the and it's like, oh, and the light would be helpful when Cassie said that at the end of as Rachel when Cassie said that as Rachel at the end of book yes. twelve. Remember yeah, that, right? Yeah, and <laughs> remember fucking yeah. book twelve, the best book I've ever read. <laughs> The three body problem of anim- animorphs books, but yeah, he, the fucking okay. the fucking uh, okay. infinite jest. Okay. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. That but, was a joke. Yeah. That was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> Elfanger is obviously not super happy that Chapman's here. We he don't need David Foster the- Walrus here. Go ahead, Miranda. <laughs> just cut some of us want to finish Walrus. the Light Chronicles. David Foster Walrus, how long have you been waiting to say that? <laughs> it's actually the name of a math rock band in Philadelphia from ten years ago. Anyway, they're, they're, I'm not proud. they're worried about the presence of Chapman, but they leave it alone because the most important thing that Elfanger got to do as a human is he got to marry Lauren when she was ready by human yes. standards. She's 18 when they get back, <laughs> which is legally ready. Oh, no, no. But I feel no, it's like legally able. I feel like she when I feel like he was like, so we will perform a joining ceremony. And she's like, we'll do it when I'm ready. And he's like, oh, but by by Andalite standards where, you know, we've done X, Y and Z, we are practically already joined. And she's like, when I'm ready by humans. <laughs> I, are you sure it doesn't mean that he could go to her father and ask for permission? to marry her? Oh. No, I just thought of that. Yeah, so he'd been asking all the time, and he's like, she's not old enough. She's only just turned 18. Yeah. And I don't remember how that happened so fast. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not what we're here to talk time about Time really today. does fly. <laughs> it really does. I remember just yesterday, she wasn't 18, <laughs> and then today, she sure was. So do you think, I mean, it has to be, because, no, I guess it doesn't have to be, because this isn't actually... Is this the universe that our main series books this in? This is a universe. In? Yes. It is. 
Well, it has to be yes. the universe because okay, of so Tobias. You're telling me right. that Lauren created the this series, is real. That, the world that our main series books are in. Yeah. Okay. So, how did we make the jump? This is what I've been waiting for. How did we make the jump from? How's your blood pressure? It's actually doing pretty well. Um, uh, how did we make the jump from a world? where books were half written because Lauren only remembered half of them to a universe that seemingly includes things that Lauren did not. It has to include things. Because that she was the only pilot. She had a complete image. She wasn't dying. And we rejoined the main But timeline. she was able to create a universe that contained things that she... She didn't create this. She didn't create this. We rejoined the original That's timeline. what happened? She drove. Okay. Yeah, she was just able to alter people's it memories. Like, it looks. It would like. be like if you typed into Google Maps Sesame uh-huh. Street, and it took you to the website for Sesame Street. What? Like they were on, they were on the website for Sesame Street when all three things were combined. But if you go to Google Maps and you type in your mom's house. It'll actually take you to your yeah. mom's To house. a real place. Does that so answer she, your question? She was not uh, creating a universe. So the, she so reached a destination. And the destination was... Yes, she goddess. reached a destination and was able to use the power of the time matrix somehow to alter people's yes. memories. But your confusion, your confusion and your, like, like, your read on it is more consistent with how the time matrix was used in the books. Cause we've been told about the awesome power of the time matrix. And in one case it spit up a fabrication. So like I empathize like the mental gymnastics. But yeah, I understand why you to thought keep that. Up with the but other it makes thing. sense because creating a new universe, a pocket universe was a solution to a problem it encountered. It encountered because it couldn't reach another timeline. Right? Like it created one. Because, yeah. Sounds like it. because yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the place they were trying to send it didn't yes. exist. Yes. Correct. That makes so much more sense and than what I had understood. Yeah, it's also funny that you say it makes sense because the only reason why we think this <laughs> makes is because sense. in a chapter the Elemist is about to literally just tell us yes. it makes yeah. sense. Yep. So it's like, don't feel yeah. too like there's it. It does not yeah. make sense. Well, it but, definitely doesn't. Uh, Chris, but uh, Elfangor got to marry Lauren. <laughs> yeah, they point. Yeah. They did. A, uh, they he point. drives a yellow Mustang. Yeah. And uh, they boinked in that Mustang. He, I'm just kidding. He took they on a human name. Did they boink in the uh, Alan, Alan Fangor. <laughs> I hate this. Oh my God. I hate it so much. And said people just call him Al. And he plays that Paul Simon song. See, and he's like, call um, me Al Fangor. Why is he suddenly hoaxing? <laughs> See, humans shorten their names just as Andalites do. Oh so most God. people call me Al Fangor. Oh, okay. I hate it. I just, Why am I flashing crawling. back to the epilogue of the Harry Potter series? That's what I feel. Oh. <laughs> Alan Fangor, you are named after the one bravest Andalite I ever yeah. knew. <laughs> this next section is just perfect cliche territory. Like, so after we get the name Alan Fangor, he says, One day I drove my car home from my job and parked it in the driveway. <laughs> I could see that Loren was not home. Her own car was not in the driveway. Amazing. She had gone to see the doctor after we've been talking so much about weddings and marriage and crap. Here's the thing, though. This sounds like what a child would say. It's like, in your third grade (laughs) daily writing assignment is describe what you do when you get home from work 15 years from now. One day, oh, I drove my car home from my job and parked it in the yeah. driveway. <laughs> like- in the first grade, in the first grade, they thought I was really stupid because we had an assignment where we had to write two or three sentences before we went out to play. And I was like, "What's the shortest sentence I can write?" And they were like, "Well, I guess like I am happy or something." <laughs> and like, and I was like, "I am happy. I am playing soon. <laughs> Bye." <laughs> 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 and they were like, that's a sentence, Frank. Never mind. <laughs> I had one in like fourth or fifth grade that was like, it was like, what would you want to become if you could become something other than a human? And except I think it actually may have just said, what, would, what do you want to become? So it may have been asking what I wanted my job to be. But I said I wanted to be a dog because people would pet me and most people would like me and be nice yeah. to me. That's how yeah. I felt as a child. Too. Yeah. You are a little puppy dog, Eddie. You're still Everyone are. would be happy to see yeah. me and would play with me. They would all love me. Exactly. Why don't they love me? 
<laughs> we do. It's just we have to go to work. It's like you don't no. love me. <laughs> That's true. I did have a lot of separation anxiety yeah. as a child. <laughs> It's true. But anyway, my whole point was she had gone to see a doctor is just the oldest this fuck yeah. is pregnant. Oh, like, yeah. She's Lorraine. Yeah, to the point pregnant. where, I mean, I guess she's we like, had this implied from the beginning, but I read that and I wrote, oh, and I was like, on my reread, I was like, did I know that already? Uh, by this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. She uh yeah. Or he he also he doesn't miss a chance to call human doctors barbarians who can't even get rid of a tumor without cutting a hole in a mm. person. It's true. But while he's opening his door essentially, someone uh, like accosts him. Someone uh confronts him. Someone uh parlays with him. A stranger, mysterious man is asking him questions or he says hello. I guess. He's, but he's a, in his he house. He's a man, a human. Oh, is he inside? Yes, he I'm is. sorry. <laughs> Standing in his living room. What yeah. a freak. Yeah. What a freak. You missed, you no missed more of the wonderful, I stepped out of the car on my two human legs. He's been doing this for three years, yeah. guys. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, like, invented Microsoft. Yeah. <laughs> he founded but Microsoft. He's bad with people. He's, this, so. Like, so a human man money, standing in his living room. He says, what are you doing in here? He demanded with angry mouth sounds. He's gotten real yeah. good at this. He's real good at this. What are you doing? He's good at, he's good at reading human doing? expression now, so he knows that this is amusement. He's the, the guy thinks this is funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and the guy's like, what am I doing here? What are you doing here? And he's like, I, I, I live here. <laughs> this is my home. This is my home. My big home. And then when But he... this is my favorite part because he's freaked out. He's on edge. There's an intruder in his home and his instinct is to go for his tail, tail, which is attached to his butt. <laughs> and he has a phantom tail, but you know, you know that a little butt flex is a part of getting the tail out in front. So you know he like yeah. clenched. He like beveled he like his clenched hip. and thrust yeah. his back, back out. Yeah, exactly. Like thinking that some harm and would be done. And he felt vulnerable. It reminds me of a... Uh, it reminds me of the other Elemist thing where when we saw Tobias in his human body, he panicked and tried to yeah, flap. Yeah, yeah, ah! yeah. Yeah, exactly. Which was the opposite of what he did in book three where he tried to run away on his human legs but was yeah. a bird. Good point, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the man in his house shakes his head sadly and says, Elfangor Serenial Shem Tool, this is not your home. Which is, a, he's, he's picking and on Elfie right now. Yeah. Al, sorry, he Al. Well, and he's also like Al. Yeah, Al. come on, get his name right. But but so like this is what tips Elfanger off to the fact that this is like not just a human intruder. I mean, he um, knows his full name. Yeah, and so we're about to get into it because he says he says, "What are you?" Yeah, what are you? And then he's like, "You don't." The uh, intruder is like, "You don't ask who I am. You ask what. You are still wise enough to know I am not human." And then he's like, "Just just tell me what you want." All right? And he's like, I don't want anything. We don't want anything. We do not interfere with the problems of other species. We? Who is we, Alfangor asks. The we whose machine you have used to alter the direction of time and space. I don't think he's talking about the Mustang here. (laughs) Elemist. Elemist. I whispered fearfully. Yes, I am one of those creatures you call Elemists. And uh, it's going to go real quick from here, guys. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but they, but this is a lot. But there's this a lot is, here. We're gonna. It is. It is a short ending. It's very abrupt. But this is like this is a lot of tell yeah. don't show. This is a lot of we need to get you back to your timeline. We got to go back. Every to the chapter's island, a Kate, jump. We got to go back. So yeah. he asks him to prove. Basically, he's like, "How could you prove you're an Elemis? Like, t- tell me, tell me things." He's like, "Hmm, let's see. I know that Arbron still lives in the tunnels of the Living Hive. Good for yeah. him." Uh, I know that you made a universe once, you and the human and the year called Visser 3. And he's like, Visser 3? Yeah, he got a lot of promotion since he last talked. He's like, but but he should be dead. He should should, should should be dead. Should be dead? Do you really think you can play games with time itself? (laughs) Do you think you can change things around to suit you and not make a mess of it? Are you so naive, Andalite? That you can't understand that time is a trillion, trillion, trillion strands all woven and interwoven. That if you twist and break one strand, it may have unforeseen effects in a thousand other places and times. 
like Miss Paloma's stupid fucking <laughs> butterfly. I was like, a butterfly can flap its wings. Flap, flap its, its wings. wings. <laughs> so we learned Visser 3 is still alive. He still inha- ha- inhabits Alarin's body. Um, and he is a terrible enemy of Elfangor's people. And that it was the Elemist who brought Chapman back. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. He undid and an error. Chapman plays Chapman a part was still supposed in to what be is here. to come. So Elfangor's like, I don't care. Elfangor I don't just, care about wars in far off space. I just want to yeah. live my life with my wife. <laughs> Do whatever. The thing I will say is, is like in life, sometimes I have been stubborn and people have come to me and informed me that I am stubborn. And if this feels like the Elemist did everything humanly possible before talking to Elfangor, he was like, you know what, let's just put, he's not going to notice if I put Visser 3 back. Like, he's not going <laughs> to notice if I put Chapman back. And that's like on my to-do no, list the anyway. other Elemists like, are checking and they're be... like, you really should. I know you keep moving talk to Elfangor <laughs> down your to-do list, but that should be at the top. He's like, no, 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 I'll deal with it when I have to. I'm putting it off. And then <laughs> it's the only thing left. Look, the holidays are coming up. I don't want to do this. Like, like can we yeah. just do it after? <laughs> but he's finally here. Mm-hmm. And, oh, there's a great moment Sorry. where, yeah, Elfangor says, I don't care about wars and far-off space. The Elmist is like, far off? Do you really think you are safe here, Elfangor? Do you assume the Yerks will never come? And Elfangor's like, will they come here? And the Elmist says, Elfangor, <laughs> the first Yerk advanced scouts are in orbit above Earth right now. Like, they're already here. Right fucking now! Right now. Right now, and you didn't even fucking notice! Yeah. Mm-hmm. Weak ass dumbass yeah. bitch. So what, it does it's raise so the true. question. That was this is definitely like one of the first steps of the Yurk invasion. What step are they on if they are so focused on this town where the Animorphs live? Like, what is the scale of this invasion? Is the thing I still want to know in the main series books. You know? Yeah. So great question. You're asking because this is the 1980s. Yeah, you're saying that like if 15 years have passed and they only and, got and that they are much relying farther, on an assistant vice principal as a high ranking member. It's a fair question. You know what? You're right. You're right. You know what? I'm gonna. I, I, I've been reading these books now for a year and a half. And I've really just been taking their word for it. But you're, you're right. That's like, that's like, like totally this fucking is ridiculous. in charge of the Yurk invasion. This is one doesn't even really know what's going on on Earth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the assistant to the leader of the human, of the Earth invasion works at a middle school. <laughs> <laughs> I get parking tickets on a regular basis. Fuck me. So what? the Elemist is like, come on, buddy. They're here. And Elfangor's like, I tried to be a hero, okay? And I failed. So what do you want from me? I'm not your guy. And he's like, you you kept the time matrix out of, out of their hands. You saved the galaxy. And he's like, cool. I couldn't save my friend. I couldn't save my boss. I, I couldn't stop Visser 3. You don't want me. Please just... Oh, leave me here. Yeah, you refuse to slaughter defenseless prisoners. You refuse to destroy yourself in order to win a battle. You are wise for a primitive creature. But you also altered the course of time by using the time matrix. This is the moment where all of... That's created a few snacks. It's 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 an up and a down. You did a good and a bad. This is the moment where all of the... Your peoples need you. Your peoples. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, too. This is the Just moment two. where all of the humans um, and- the elements will remember that pays off. Like he's seeing all of his choices. <laughs> it's all showing yeah. up here. And he's like, "You're not where and when you're supposed to be, Elfangor." And and he's like, "I cannot be that important. It is not possible for me to be that important." He's like, "He they get their their faces get real mm-hmm. close." And he's They're like, kiss. "You are. It needs you." And he's like, well, what do you want from me? And he yells directly into his face, suddenly enraged. Mm-hmm. He's like, we mm-hmm. want nothing. And he's like, that that literally doesn't make any sense. That does. Why the fuck are you here if you don't want anything? It's, he's like, oh, it's well, real. you know, I just have some ideas. Yeah. Like, hear me out. Hear me out. What if you A did what of I want? suggestions. Yeah. <laughs> right. What if you willingly did what I wanted? The summary of this section that is so intense and you should 
go read it because it's very fun. Um, but the summary of this section is like, the Elemist is trying to get Elfangor to go back to his timeline to do his duty and run away from this timeline where he's happy with Loren. And it's going to tear up that whole life. That that whole timeline will kind of cease to exist. Loren won't even remember him. And he has to go back to war. Like, you know, there was no break. And the only reason given is is at the end of this whole conflict that they're going through. Because... Elfangor is confused because he's like, you say you don't interfere in like species. And it's like, we don't. And the Elemist is very, very clear. We don't manipulate species. We don't just do stuff to people. We're just offering you options. And it's like they have this sense of themselves of like not manipulating. But they're basically saying there really is no other choice. Like everything you love will be destroyed and this whole life you're living is a lie. So you better do what I say. And then the only reason given is that apparently there's also dark entities as big as the Elemists, as old, Mm -hmm. even older than the Elemists themselves, that are perpetrating a war against the Elemists. And this is how the Elemists are trying to mitigate the harm. They're also like, so like they're merely pawns on a bigger chessboard seems to be. And it's not about the Yurk invasion. It's about some higher dimensional war that is about the Yurk invasion. I don't quite understand. He also, so he's, and he also insists that he's not interfering because what he's actually doing is writing a wrong, Mm -hmm. repairing, repairing a shattering, this mm-hmm. wasn't supposed to happen. It's not interfering to try to put pieces back where they're supposed to be. Right. And Which is a hell of a statement. And he also says that it makes it puts Lauren in more danger when Elf, when Visser 3 inevitably comes to Earth for her to be who she is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, he manipulates him that way and he says, if you just ask me, I can put you where you're supposed to be. And that's it. It'll all be done. But why? So Tobias. Where? I'm sorry. Where, Chris, are you seeing all the stuff about this that's other That's at the end of the next chapter. The I may have skipped yeah. a chapter. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Okay. I didn't see yeah, it there. Short, I mean, a lot happens a here in a short So I was a little. But, okay. So we do have this moment. I do want to hit it just because. You're right. Okay. Yes. I see that. Yes. Okay. We're good. I was just oh, that's like, when I the Elmas goes back to speaking in all caps and sounds it, like Werner Herzog. Yeah. Um, right. Right now he sounds yeah. like Joe Pesci. <laughs> it is, he's played by Joe Pesci in this scene. It's true. Um, uh, <laughs> that's the human yeah. body he would take. Um, <laughs> we do get this. I wouldn't say it's a great moment. It's a sad moment. We learn uh, what Elfangor is fated to be and what Lauren is fated to be. The human girl Lauren was meant to marry a human. You were meant to be a warrior, a great hero to your people, a mentor, (laughs) and a guide to your brother. Uh, So, uh, You hear that, ladies? You hear what's in store for you? (laughs) This is the world that the Elemist wants to build. Uh, (laughs) This is a a very gendered, a very very sexist world. agrees to go with the Elemist. And he's like, he's like, he's really right. He's got some real points about sexism. He, and- <laughs> he remembers what he saw when he used the time matrix of seeing all the timelines into or the lines of time, not timelines. So you're talking about now that he's agreed. We're in the chapter 47. Is back, right? Yes. We're in chapter 47. Chapter 47. Okay, cool. As and he's so the- taking him back. And he could, right. he says he could feel the lines of time flowing through him, could see and taste and hear and touch and smell. So many mm-hmm. senses. Yeah, a billion possibilities. He sees the actual Elemist. He sees his real form and an indescribable being of light and time and space. Huge, but without a place alone, but not the only one of his kind. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, was that a good was cool. line. Yeah, and he says that he's mighty, but he can see that he's not all mm-hmm. powerful. And then he sees Axe. He sees yeah. little Axe, so serious, so determined. The whole to prove universe himself. cracked open. He can see through all of space and time, apparently, and he can and pick out from all the asteroids mm-hmm. like his younger brother Axe. Because this is as the Elemist is moving him through time and space to where he wants to 
flop mm-hmm. hip. Yeah, but Axe and Arbron are not particularly close yeah. to no, each No, I'm just saying that's why he mm-hmm. can see them. It's as he's being moved. You're right. And you're the right. Elemist has access to all of space and yeah. time, so he can it's true. see all of it. And he Next sees... Sli- you remember when the Elemist did that slideshow yeah. back in book yeah. seven? And he was like, Look Next at slide. It. Beautiful. Look at it. from his vacation. Uh. <laughs> this is Arby. I'm sorry, Arbron. Still alive on the Taxon world. And he feels his Taxon hunger and also senses his Andalite pride. Which I think two beers for our beer line, our Animorphs beer line. Yeah, and he yes. says, "Oh, tax on the like, light like pride, or like, or like two styles of beer Ooh. mixed into one." You know, like, I feel like, like Andalite it, Pride is a double yeah. IP. And it's, it comes out in yeah. June. Yeah. And what's. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and what, and tax what's on the other hunger. one again? Tax it's, on uh, hunger? Porter. No. Stout? Yeah, like a porter or stout, right? Something thick. No. What was, our, what was our tax you know on that sour that was the name for it? Uh, oh, it was a sour, had, wasn't it? No, it was a cocktail. That was a tax on cocktail. We have to go back to that. We did have a cocktail with a gummy worm, but we did have something that was a sour. We had Skunk Mother IPA and some kind of sour. Yeah. Well, the Stinky Visser was a mixed yeah. drink. Or was a cocktail. Yeah. All right. We'll, Any, we'll, we'll remember sure, what we, we said eventually. Yeah. That will be released in 2024. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he says, it's 2024 now. Uh, Elfangor thinks to himself, hello, Arbron. You have become the hero I always wanted to be. So I guess he's leading some sort of somewhat successful taxon rebellion? This is my least favorite part of Survivor, when they're when it's the final three and they have to go back and oh, talk about look at all, all the, the torches. people who got voted out. Yeah. Yeah. He sees Lauren... And uh, he sees that her timeline is now getting wrapped around another human as her mate, and that she's and that he's been removed mm-hmm. from her memory. But, but he, he also he, he, he sees notices something something. weird. Yeah, he sees what is, what does he notice there, Chris? I saw that some part of my own lo- timeline still intersected her own. Intersected her own. I still touched her future Intersect. in some way. My line and hers converged, and then from those two lines came. A new line, just emerging, just beginning to grow. What does it mean? I asked the Elemist. You have... You have... You have a, a son! son. Ba, ba, ba. In a flash, it's- I saw the truth. That's why Lauren had gone to see her doctor. It was a baby doctor! <laughs> The doctor was a baby and could recognize a baby <laughs> no, on the way. You can't take me away. You look just like my mother when she was having me. I have me. a son. That changes everything. Oh, come on. Don't take me away. You are away, Alphagor Serenial Shemtool. Yes, so we learn that he has. What was broken, husband? What? How did I do it? I How did I do this? It's been so long. What was... Don't oh, worry, because it'll be it. better than your... Hu- you are hu- away, Elfangor Sen- <laughs> Thanks, bud. <laughs> You are away, Elfangor Serenio Shemtul. What has broken has been repaired. You are where you must be, Lord Wonka. The child will be raised. (laughs) Hugh Grant was the Oompa Loompas in the new Wonka movie, dude. Oh, was he? I didn't see that. Nobody saw it. It was terrible, (laughs) but it's true. Anyway, um, you are where you must be. The child will be raised as the son of another. So this confuses me. So he didn't actually undo any of the things that they did. He's just doing what Lauren did where she wrote over people's memories to say that she was 18. It seems like he's not taking them back in time and changing things. He's still the father of Lauren's yes. child. Almost like that, but it, and it's weird because it seems like that was meant to be, but we're told this whole thing is like an aberration. Yeah, right. which does no. not scan. It doesn't scan that. that so was he changed. Well, but it almost feels like the only maybe the only reason that the elements ever let this happen was mm. be, because mm-hmm. of it. Oh, like they're only fixing the stuff that was detrimental to their causes. That's perfectly sensible. That's exactly right. So, like, I think they see an advantage in Tobias mm-hmm. existing. And being somehow related to Elfangor, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I think that's it. The Elemists are like, whoa, okay, this part broke well, oh, this when part they do, didn't they, break well. We're allowed they, to they reset. They kind of address this. Then, like a distant Nova, I saw a flash of light far at the edge of a still uncertain future. Across the galaxy, my brother's line reached to join with my sons, and four other bright, shining timelines formed 
together with those two. I knew I was watching something incredible and important, and I knew this union of six timelines, one Andalite and five human, was the entire point of the Elemis non-interference. So you don't interfere with the affairs of other species, I asked him. Was that sarcasm, Alfangor? The Elemis asked. The interference there is that they did they a lot. They did all this to make the Animorphs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah should we just, should we yeah, just go ahead? Is it, is it all a game for you? Yeah, go, yes. go for it. But we are not the only great powers of the galaxy. There is another, older, even than we. And he plays a dark game. And a light. It is with him that we play. So hope that we win. Elfangor Serenial Shemtul. Hope that we win. Sounds like the devil, yeah. you guys. He sees a battle ahead. He sees his body changing back into an Andalite. And all at once... He was on the bridge of an Andalite fighter. Mm -hmm. Only three years have passed since those events of uh, of the Taxon homeworld. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's back. He's just back. Back. Yeah, he just like arrives hot on the scene. He's in the middle of a big ass battle. He's on the Star Sword. He's on the Star Sword. Was he in? He's is he on the Star yeah. Sword? The Star Sword's you're being right, attacked. Yeah. He's in a fight. He's not on the Star Sword. He's in a. He's in and a fight. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, 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 back. Like, even in this timeline, it doesn't make sense that Elfangor is back. He's been inserted totally. by the Elemis, right? Where he yeah. needs to be. Exactly. And the battle's going on, and there are Yurk forces, and we do get we do get the first drop of the battle Jahar. Um, the, the action, the, the battle wife of Visser 3. Ah, the blade um, ship. His blade ship. The blade wife. Damn it. Fuck me. We do get sword the initial lesbians and blade arrival wives. of the sword lesbian and blade wives ship. No, the blade exactly. ship showed up. That's Damn. how the Visser arrived to the Jahar when they were near the black hole was on the blade ship. Eddie is correct. Yeah. It's Whatever. how he emerged post <laughs> Exxon planet. He showed up on. Well, we needed to make we needed to make a blade white. Uh, bl uh, we needed to make a blade yeah. wife sword and lesbian it. joke it's two there. episodes yeah. ago. Then, yeah. So well, anyway, I don't know how we fix this, Eddie. You this hadn't is the seen world we Revolutionary Girl Utena yet. You, you I had bought ready. an RPG called Thirsty <laughs> no, no, no. Sword Lesbians, what the and it wasn't want even is on they my want head. Us to go back and re instead of continuing to progress through the Andalite Chronicles, the they want us to re-release the earlier episodes so that we're in. Yeah, <laughs> again. <laughs> Annotated yeah. copies of the early, not our notes, new notes. Uh, new uh, notes on the notes. Director's we listen cut to the episodes <laughs> with beat a, by beat. And a, a commentary. Yes. Yeah. Episode yeah. commentary. Yes. <laughs> an audio commentary on an audio podcast about sometimes an audio book, in my so case. This is just Elfangor showing up like Han Solo on the Millennium Falcon to save the day, right? Who? Well, yeah. <laughs> yes, sort yeah. of. He shows up. He hears that Visser Three is in this in this blade ship that's fighting the Star Sword, and he hears like an emergency call coming out from the Star Sword. And so he's like, "I'm gonna open up comms to uh, Visser Three to make a quick call." Uh, and he's like, "Who dares call upon the Visser?" This is a Hork Bajir who appears on the monitor, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he's like, "Oh, you know, tell the Visser that uh, that an old friend is here to see him. Tell him that I'll Fangor." Come to finish what we began in a vortex. That's hot. A long time ago. In a Mustang. Yeah, and he's just gonna, yeah, in a Mustang, in, in his fighter, and he's just planning to basically crash into them. Yep. He's like, That's his plan. I'm going to drive straight towards them and tell them that I'm not going to stop. And then he does that. And they like call bullshit and they're like, there's no way you would do that. You would die for sure. And he's like, yeah, yeah, that's true. And he fucking collides at full speed with the blade ship, cuts it in half. And then or somehow like miraculously, nobody mm -hmm. dies, but it does cause the Yurks to be intimidated and all leave. And he and somehow that's... survives. They say that he should have, he simply should have died. And yeah, I think but that probably the Elemist had something to do yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> also, yeah, not interfering Visser my ass. Visser 3 remembers Alfangar, which also is Elemist, a decision made by the Elemist, right? Because Chapman doesn't remember anything. Yes. But right, they got the Alfangar from yeah. the... And yeah. then uh, he we, loves we get another Andalite dome ship name. Oh, yeah, a new dome ship just dropped. They come to save the Star Sword. It's the uh, it's the tail strike. Whoa. <laughs> and uh, the Yerk pool ship flees, and uh, 
Elfanger wakes up aboard the Star Sword, and everybody's decided he's a He'll hero. Be a prince. He's the lost heiress. We have the scene where they're putting the trophies he on comes them, up. the medals on them. He spills the beans about everything that happened, Can't like beat for beat, to his captain. Of course, trying to Can't keep. keep a secret. And his captain's like, yeah, his captain's like, hey, pretend you didn't just say all that to me because we're going to rewrite history a little bit, which is supported by our experience with higher ups at the end yeah. of our military. It's definitely an echo eight. of that, yeah. And yeah, he does sure. convince Elfangor that the. I, Elfangor was probably already convinced by the uh, Elamist, but like he agrees in this conversation that he will fight for the Andalites. And so he's back at work. He's it's got to be now. so funny. I hope it's the same captain. And it's like, he's like, all right, I'm going to lie and cover up the fact that Elfangor is actually like mutinous and has broken the law several times. And then Axe calls in and is like, my brother broke the law several times. And he's just like, God <laughs> like, damn it. It's like, in the goddamn family. I made Those sham tools. Well, not even. It's because it was Elfangor again. He did it <laughs> mm-hmm. again. <laughs> <laughs> give a give a sham tool revisionist mm-hmm. history <laughs> and the last for a glass um, of milk, we do know. learn that Alarin used to be a you know he was a real lovable menace when he was a child he's he, he was, was a, a trickster, trickster. Um, but then yeah. war does terrible things to people some it raises to greatness others it destroys you did not mutiny against Alarin you defended the beliefs he used to hold dear you stood up for the people that's what this Person. That's nice. Yeah. It's touching. And it's nice. Yeah. It, it, I'll take that. It rings a little less true when you know that he already knew <laughs> yeah. about the quantum virus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and apparently didn't really yeah. care. <laughs> but, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Elfangor is also moved. He says, it was strange. I felt like crying, but I no longer had those feminine human eyes. Tear so dance. I cried the way a, a, a real <laughs> Mandalite does inside in my heart. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Mandalite. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. Mandalite. Mandalite. Wow. It makes sense with what the Mandalite we have to change Chronicles. the name of the podcast. Yeah, the Mandalite Chronicles, how to use animorphs to reclaim your your masculinity. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and we yeah. also is this the first time we learned that Andalites have multiple hearts? No, we've well, heard not it. Not the first time we learn it. It yeah, felt like a drop and, of uh, information inside in my heart. And the captain is like, you know, and you ran away to Earth. Ah, people, people, no one can be brave all the time. <laughs> what noise was that? What, what? noise? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, what? Who does that remind me of? Like, it's, some, <laughs> it's Bobcat Goldthwait. <laughs> you sound like Bobcat Goldthwait. So, anyway. yeah, this is like <laughs> something we've already seen with the Andalites. So they lo- their myths are very important to them. Like, they're, the story yes. is more important than the truth. Um, they're a lot like humans in that way. Mm. Chapter 49? Last chapter? Many nice. years have yeah. passed. Yeah, it's been many years before he saw Earth again. He fought a bajillion battles, killed so many people. Interestingly, some weird zero space stuff has happened between the Andalite planet and Earth. A zero space rift, he calls it. They can no longer travel there in mere days. It now takes months, which is, I guess, why they can't just send reinforcements. Yeah, that's why it's taking the Andalites so long to get here. He posits that this is a part of the Greater Ones War. The, mm. like, the Elemists and the other, like, and whatever this tampering from the other side, yeah. the Dark Ones, mm-hmm. yeah, the Elder Beings, the Elder The Taurus, Eye of Sauron. The Eye of Sauron, Azathoth himself, Asmodeus, one of Solomon's lesser keys. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying um, stuff They now. show up in but, a um, brand new dome ship, the Galaxy Tree. Still, it's a better name, but it's still not great, I think. Yeah. I no. think it's, it's an improvement. improvement. Yeah. Improvement. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You said that so, like, you're like, yeah, I guess it's better. <laughs> Axe is on the ship, and we find that we're in the first book moments eight. of book one again. And also book the first eight, moments yeah. of book eight. Uh, and he meets the children. <laughs> Funny how that works. And he sees Tobias. His son. And he just knows. My boy. That's... That that's his yeah. son, man. And he calls out to him, and he's like, tell me, tell me about your mother. About your yeah. family. He's like, oh, she disappeared when I was just little. I don't know what happened. I guess she died. People say she left because she was messed up. They said she never got over my father. I don't know. But I know she has to be dead because she'd never have just left me. No matter what. 
But maybe that's just what I told myself. I don't exactly have a family. The implication there is that Lauren remembered in spite of what the Elemist did. That is what I'm picking up. I don't know if she truly, tr- like, remembered all the events, but she remembered yeah. something. Body keeps the you score. Know what I or mean? her she new husband. The score, yeah, she remembered. Left her, and she just really liked him. Was <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which, like, why? Why couldn't the Elemist get her somebody yeah. more compatible? Like what? Yeah. You know, like speed dating That's true, with the she Elemist. Says, he says they said she never got over my father, but he never says he knew his yeah. father. So that, and he never says right. anything about a stepdad. Exactly. So, like, if his dad's name, if his new dad is also named Al Fangor, man, uh, <laughs> <laughs> then his name would be Tobias. So, Fangor, I guess we don't know his last name. Yeah. Yeah, we don't. We're not yeah. allowed to know his last name. So this is it. Then he tells him, oh, right. "Your friends are your family it is now." Fangor. You're right. Oh, you're no, 100% we don't. Greg. We don't it know. It is canon. It is we Tobias Fangor. We don't know Fangor. what his new dad is. It's not no. canon. It's a hundred percent canon. Here's it's why. Not. Here's why I am making so many people cringe right now because it's not canon, but it's a hundred, it's my canon. Okay, okay that's it's fine. My that's head you, canon. Get, you get to keep that, Chris. To you know what? You Tobias to Fangor. <laughs> I'm going to go update Seropedia well, right here's now. The thing. There was an episode of Um Actually not that long ago where they reported his last name as Santarelli and somebody had to tweet at them that that was the last name they gave him in their fan fiction and they had to acknowledge it on the show that that this was not, in fact, his mm. last name, that he had never been given a last name, and they had somehow picked a last name wow. from a famous <laughs> fan fiction. Um, we should... Acknowledge how huge this Actually. moment is, though, because since the beginning, we've been like, what did El Fangor download to Tobias's brain? This is the moment. This is what happened there. And then this is it. This is it. And we still don't know exactly what he downloaded because he says that he just talked mm-hmm. to him. It was some, even an information. But we do know yeah. that he yeah. that he did an information dump. And does he actually talk about that no. here? So we do know one other interesting thing that we sort of glossed because we were excited about Tobias. Bias. He crashes on Earth, he says, and I, desperate enough to break my own vow, took the damaged fighter down to the planet, looking for a place where I had long ago Mm. hidden the Time Matrix. By the time I had landed, I was too weak for my injuries to even think about finding the Time Matrix. But in theory, he is close. It was buried beneath the concrete foundation of a half-finished building. What had once been a peaceful forest was now a construction construction site. site. The time matrix is there. Is in the construction site. So here's my other question. That hole in the ground, are they looking for it? The Yerks? Well, Mm, the hole in the ground. You mean why is the Yerk base so big? Are they... Excavating underneath, looking for it. Is that what you're Maybe, asking? Yeah, but I forgot. What's the hole I, in the ground? I, or do you? Oh, you mean the hole in the the in at the top of the year pool? There's yes. a little hole in the ground, and I don't. There think was that not a hole in the ground. In the I assume I'm remembering it wrong. We had we yeah. we had theorized we were like maybe ah oh, you're directly right you're right okay I'm just misremembering book like one yeah. yeah oh it was it was eighteen months ago it was a long time yeah. we were so much we had no than. idea about Al Fangor we didn't we didn't know there would be a time matrix under there we didn't know, yeah Al Fangor so Alf, you know it's so close to Alf <laughs> it's like don't do you know <laughs> please don't do this <laughs> so this is it this this final is morph is <laughs> here <laughs> He eats his cats. <laughs> Herak Delas is done. He goes to his death in peace, and he leaves as his last legacy a single word for all the free peoples of the galaxy. Hope. Hope. <laughs> and then Wait. in 2008, he ran <laughs> yeah. on that platform and became to become Obama. the first Andalite <laughs> Obama ever to be elected to office. Yeah, thank, yeah we, thanks Obama's the we, obvious joke after that. There's so that. much build up here. We hear the phrase, Hirak Delist. My Hirak Delist is done. I go in peace to my death and I leave as my last legacy a single word for all the free peoples of the galaxy was hope. That's a lie, though, because he left this whole book. Very true. Yeah. (laughs) And my last word at the end of this very long. (laughs) (laughs) But the last word was in Gallard, so it's slightly. How how would you do the last word? Yeah. That last word. That ellipsis is doing uh, a lot of work. Do you know the moment? It's, oh? No, it's the end of Rogue One where they bring Princess Leia, the old CGI Princess Leia, yeah. the plant, and she goes, hope. 
Oh, you know what? That's much better. But I hear an emphatic really period good. at the end of that. Not hope. Yeah, I think this might actually be the rare. No, because it's actually they, they, no, not it's an actually ellipsis. Exactly it's actually it's three a, periods. It's a per, in no, a it's row. a perfect ellipsis because it's like it's this long, drawn out like like that is the message, but there's mm, more to be okay. written. Okay, you know what I mean? Because that's what they're saying to Leia when they hand it to her. They're like, "What's on that drive?" And she's like, "Hope." Hope. Mm-hmm. Literally, I wiped it. It just says hope. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you we guys, we finished it's Andalite exactly Chronicles. ten o'clock. Like we actually did half a book in a sitting. Not a half a book. Like, I mean, half of a section of the book. How- well, each book. Well, each section of this book was similar was in roughly, size to yeah. an Animorphs. Oh, book. I have. I have Which, to apologize. Um, I didn't poop that's the true. whole time. Yeah, that's incredible. Hope. That's incredible. It comes right back. <laughs> um, I I had a restless leg at one point, and my chair was making a new noise, which I'm worried about how that's going to come across in the. Ah, don't worry about That'd it. Be fine. Okay. We have doctors for that. We know. We know that we asked our listeners to guess how many episodes we would do. I have guesses. Yes, but how many? People. Your initial guess, Chris, was how many nine. have we released right now? Well, this is meddling. This is cheating. Released? Um, no, I'm, we're just keeping track. We're just. Let's I'll see. count them. Episode. Uh, let me nine. count the ways. We've released One, nine. Two, nine. Episodes, episodes I think 45, 15, 50, 55, 15 is a fair guess, I think. You already like, guessed, oh, Eddie. You can't update. change your guess. <laughs> you already this guessed. This is a guess I'm making. You're locked in, bud. When you join an office pool and you're betting on something, you what was my guess? What was your my guess? guess? When you have the, it oh, was well, like 17 or some shit. It was super high. It's a great guess. Can I make a revised guess? And it won't count as my guess, but it... You can beg. You can beg our <laughs> listeners as to whether or not... You can... Everybody can let us know via a five-star review whether or not Eddie <laughs> gets to revise I'm not revising his guess, my original okay? guess. I guess I'm just checking in with my guess. That's what I'm doing. So. I'm checking I'm checking in. <laughs> just like, like I'm checking in with my taxes. It's like when your therapist just, asks you to set goals at like an early appointment, and then six weeks later, it's like, let's just check in with your goals. I'm not worried about where you are in terms of achieving them, but how achievable do they feel? Like, yeah. yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, here, I'm gonna. I'm pulling up Twitter. This should just go in this episode because um, we don't know what it is. But Miranda can do an editor's note. Okay, here I am, Chris, editor Chris, in the future with the actual count of how many episodes it took the Anna Dor- I mean Anna uh, Cool Kids to do the Andalite Chronicles. Drum roll, please. I need to get a drum roll sound effect, but you get the idea. But here we go. It was 17 episodes. And if you're wondering if anybody guessed it, back on November 16th, I was sent a message by one of our Patreons, Elliot De Niro, guessing that it will take us 17 episodes. And that's 17, including this very episode, which I had forgotten about that message. And there was a chance that I almost split this episode up in two, but then I was lazy last week, took a week off, put it all into one. So, you know, if I had remembered or, that, you know, people will say it was collusion and there were kickbacks and the whole thing was rigged. No, it was not. I have no evidence of that, but it wasn't rigged. And holy Jesus shit, Elliot De Niro, great guess. Um, I don't know how, I don't know what the prize is yet. We'll have to figure something. But, um... Jesus. All right. Here are the old Anadorks, I mean the Anna Cool Kids, who are actually the younger Anna Cool Kids, finishing out the rest of their Andalite Chronicles episode already in progress. Here you go. Bye. Um, I will say, oh my god, we finished recording Elfie's Book of Lies. <laughs> Lies, aka Andalites, a revisionist and, history. And How about Herrick Delist, rev- more like Herrick revisionist. D-list. That'll really upset people. <laughs> revisionist. <laughs> no, keep that. Keep that. All the revisionist history. A how-to guide. Um, col- semicolon. What was Herrick yours, Eddie? Delist, more like Herrick D-list. D-list. These. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
And we're going to do a follow-up Megasode, I think. I have a question. Yeah. Just, yeah. I think this is better okay. to hit this here. Elfangor, one of his big things in this book, at him and Lauren, was that he didn't, he eventually didn't want to wipe Lauren's memory. That was, he was saying, that was something they argued about through the book, or talked about through the book. Yeah. He did end up wiping her memory. Uh, he didn't. The Elemist did. He didn't. But he agreed, agreed to her yeah. memory being to a situation which so it's very memory. unfair. That's true. Dynamic through the whole book. I'm not saying. I, I just think he came out in a much better spot than her because it sounds like her life didn't go great. You know, she's kind of like a tragic character. That's true. I think his life maybe didn't That's go true. so great yeah. either. But you're right that she was never in a. She was at her most powerful when we met her holding up the Skritna on that ship. And if we'd left her alone, I think she'd have been yeah. fine. And we ruined her life. Yeah, I think yeah. you're right. <laughs> a hero, Lauren. Yeah. I hope we get more of her. I feel like there's more story to be told. If, if her story ends with they sa- she yeah, disappeared. You're right, because he says they said she just yeah. left. But, like, that doesn't mean that's what happened. Maybe she's Visser, too. Mm, that would be a second <laughs> <laughs> mom who turns out to be Visser. Or maybe she's in some sort of, like, underground resistance to the Yerks, like, of humans who know yeah. about the Yerks. Yeah. That'd, that'd be, be cool. cool. That, that probably cool. won't happen. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be neat. There's no Lauren Chronicles. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Lauren's actually been following around every person who got unyerked, like, and she's like r- rounding them up, like that weird woman oh. in the woods and the man who like ripped the thing out of his oh, ear. Oh, that's and all those Lauren. Things. Anybody that's who Lauren. didn't get killed by the yerks, I bet you. I'm like Lauren's going around. Rounding him up, and she's mounting. What if a that was Lauren? What if Lauren almost caved? What if Lauren Rachel? was the weird woman in the world? I like oh Miranda's God, version. That's so sad. <laughs> she knew about Yerks. She knew her hair was about long. Her fingernails fabrics. were dragging. She didn't know a lot about artificial, artificial skin. All right, skin. hold on. Now let me look. Let me look. Let me look for the description. Man, I like your. I like your. Like that would be a great storyline for. For Lauren, yeah, I think that'd be cool. Been hours walking in the woods. Who was I? What did I know? Blah, blah, blah. I walked, hoping the clouds would live my amnesia. Blah, blah, blah. Flash, a store. Oh, she sees the fabric, remembers the store, but I couldn't see anymore. I looked again. There's a shack. A woman, old, not so old, just shabby, wearing many layers of clothing. Artificial skin. She looked fat. <laughs> yeah, artificial skin, but she wasn't. She was thin, dragging. Dragging her fingernails yep, no, along no behind descriptors her. Yeah, about her so hair. we don't know if her hair was yeah, yeah. blonde and beautiful. Yeah, but... She was mentally ill. Okay. I don't know. I, and she'd be what? That was, she was 18 when they came back three years later, and it's been 20 it could be years her. since then. Be she'd her. be in her 40s. Yeah, that could be yeah, her. Yeah, it could be her. Super sad if that's true. Very that sad. Can't Did be she true. die in no. that fire? Nope. She just left. The woman okay. in the shack. She's like, I guess I need a new house now. <laughs> <laughs> She's coming back. All right, woman well, that's, that's it. That's Andalite Chronicles. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Anadorks. We'll be back soon with lots more to say. Until the Andalites return, or at least until next time. See you soon. Bye.